Hi guys, Mimi G here of MimiGStyle.com and today we're going to be doing another sew along for one of my latest pre-fall simplicity patterns, pattern 8702, my tracksuit. Now if you're new to sewing or you just need a refresher course, make sure and watch the Sewing Basics video linked in the description box below. Watch that, then come and sew along with me. Okay, so we obviously are going to be working on 8702 and we're gonna start with view C, which is the leggings. Now, the pattern does come with two options on the pants. You can do the straight leggings or you can do the drop crotch. I know not everybody likes the drop crotch. I love the drop crotch, but for this video, we're gonna be doing just the regular legging view C. Now also in the back of the envelope, we have a list of fabric suggestions and all of the notions that you're going to need. Let's get started with view C. Now just for clarification on the pattern envelope, you're going to see that I have four different colors in my color blocking for this particular design, but you can choose to do all one color or two colors or three colors. So for this tutorial, I'm only using two colors. I'm using the army green and the gray. So just in case you're wondering, that's why I'm, we're only gonna be using minimal color blocking for this tutorial, but you are free to use however many colors you want. And also you can mix and match your colors, solid colors with any prints. Okay, you're gonna need pattern piece number 26, which is the back of our leggings. You're gonna need pattern piece number 25, which is the front of our legging. You're gonna need pattern piece number 21, which is the upper side trim. You're also gonna need the middle side trim, which is pattern piece number 22. And you're going to need the lower side trim, which is pattern piece number 23. Lastly for this, you're gonna need pattern piece number 24, which is the waistband and the casing. Now you have two options. You can choose to cut it out of your double knit fabric or whatever knit fabric you're using. Or if you have access to rib knit, um, you could use that, that's what I'm using. You can find some of it on Amazon. I know that there are certain um, online stores that do carry solid rib knit fabric. Okay, so we're gonna start by building out the side of our pants. So this is pattern piece number 22 and 23. And what we're gonna do first is you're going to align your notches. So you have two notches on that slanted part. Now, the part that has the middle section that has two notches at the end, that obviously goes down at the bottom, okay? So you wanna make sure that your pattern pieces match up at those two notches that are on the diagonal. So with right sides facing, I'm gonna line up my notch and I'm gonna pin. And now go ahead and go to your sewing machine and you're just gonna stitch across using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, once you have your upper and mid section sewn together, I pressed my seam open and now we're gonna attach the zipper portion that goes at the bottom of the pant. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your two pieces and you're going to grab your zipper. We're first gonna attach the zipper to these two pieces and then we'll attach the entire piece to the bottom of the side. So what you wanna do first is you want to, I always buy a longer um, zipper than necessary so that I can stitch freely um, be around my zipper pull. In this case, you're going to be attaching it making sure that one side of your zipper tape is a generous one eighth of an inch from the edge and also from the bottom, okay? So in this case, you're not gonna be able to work around it unless you open that zipper tape up. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin just in the middle just to hold it where I need it. And then I like to open my zipper so that I don't have to deal with that zipper pull. And now you're gonna take this to the sewing machine and I'm gonna show you, we're gonna stitch along the edge and then we'll place this one on the other piece and then stitch this down. Okay, so as you can see, if you have a long enough zipper, you can sort of pull your zipper pull completely out of the way. And the zipper tape is a generous eighth of an inch away from the edge and also um, from the bottom. I have my zipper foot placed um, on my machine and now I'm going to stitch, making sure my needle is at least an eighth of an inch from my zipper teeth. Backstitch at the beginning. And now you're gonna grab your other piece and you're going to place it on the other side 
Same way, an eighth of an inch away from the bottom because we're working in the other direction now. Okay, now we can close our zipper. Okay, now you want to go ahead and press this flat. Okay, once you have pressed it flat, now we're going to attach it to the side. So what you're gonna do is you should have two notches on the end of the middle section and you should have two notches on your bottom portion. You're going to align those up and you're going to stitch using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. If you're using a metal zipper, please be careful when putting your needle through the zipper. I like to manually feed my machine just so I don't break a needle. Okay, we have our entire side piece together. Um, if you notice in my pattern envelope or even in the pictures on my blog post, you'll notice that each of these sections for me were different colors, but like I said, I'm keeping it pretty basic for the tutorial purpose, so the entire thing is in gray, but I really encourage you to be creative and use as many colors as you possibly can. It's sort of what adds to the flair of the tracksuit. So now we're gonna attach the front and back pants to our strip on the sides. So you'll notice that on each of your strips you have a notch at the very top and then on the other side the notch is down at the bottom. So you want to make sure that you're placing the correct piece making sure that you align your notches. Okay so the front piece right sides facing have the notch at the top. So go ahead and match that first and pin and then you can go ahead and pin the rest of your leg And now while I have you here, I'm going to move this out of the way and I'm gonna grab the back and you're going to pin matching that notch that's about halfway down the pant leg. Pin there first. Now you're just gonna to go to your sewing machine and you're going to stitch down using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and then you're going to do the other side the same way. When you're done, your pant leg should look like this. Okay, so you know you should be stitching everything with a very narrow zigzag stitch. Um, if you have a serger, I would suggest using your serger for the entire thing. Um, one, because you wanna make sure that the um, stitches don't pop when you're trying to put on these stretchy leggings. So if you're not already using a narrow zigzag stitch, please switch over to a narrow zigzag stitch. Um, and you also should serge your seam allowances if you have a serger. So I've already done that. I've done both the legs. Now we're going to stitch our inseam together and then we're going to slip one leg inside the other. So with right sides facing, go ahead and match up that notch and pin. You're gonna go ahead and pin your other inseam the same way. Now head over to your sewing machine and you're going to stitch your inseam using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and you're gonna do the same thing to your other leg. Okay, so I have one pant leg wrong side out and one pant leg right side out. So I'm gonna put the one that's right side out inside of the one that's wrong side out. And I'm gonna match my inseams. Now right side's facing, of course. Make sure and align your notches. The back has three notches, the front has two notches. Okay, now go ahead and go to your sewing machine and you're going to sew in a U shape. So you're gonna stitch along your entire crotch. Now make sure that you're using a narrow zigzag stitch or even a stretch stitch if your machine has one because this is the crotch area and you don't want your stitches to pop when you're wearing it. Okay, so I went ahead and grabbed my waistband and I made my two buttonholes. Um, go ahead and make your buttonholes where the markings are, which you should have transferred from your waist piece onto your um, either rib knit that you're using or fabric if you cut out a fabric waistband instead. Also make sure that you transfer the two markings on the side where we're going to stitch, stop, and then start again. That's where we're gonna be inserting our elastic. So I want you to fold your band in half with right sides facing and you're going to pin. And then at those markings, I'm gonna put a pin. And this will 
let me know when I'm going to stitch, stop and back stitch, leaving this open between the two dots and then back stitching again and sewing to the end. All right, we're gonna back stitch at the beginning using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I'm reaching that first dot, so I'm gonna stop and back stitch. Break your thread, move up to the next dot, back stitch. Okay, so I went ahead and pressed my band. As you can see on the inside, we have the opening where we're gonna attach our, insert our elastic. So now we can go ahead and slip this on over the pants. Make sure that your buttonholes are facing the right side, right? You don't wanna end up with buttonholes on the back. And you're just going to, with right sides facing, align that center seam. And I'm gonna pin. You wanna align that center back seam with the center back seam on your band. And then pin your sides. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and stitch all the way around using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, once you have your waistband attached, you can go ahead, cut your piece of elastic, put a safety pin through one end, and we're going to go ahead and pull it through our casing. Make sure your elastic doesn't twist. Now go ahead and overlap your elastic, zigzag stitch them down. Okay, now go ahead and close that off using a slip stitch. And now we're gonna go ahead and put in our drawstring. So sort of the same thing. Put your safety pin through the end of your drawstring. And then again, you're just gonna go around until you come out your other drawstring. Okay, now that you have your drawstring in, you're gonna close out your opening with a slip stitch. And the only thing left for you to do is to finish the hem of your pants. So what you're going to do is you're going to serge the edge and then turn under the one and a quarter inch hem allowance, stitch around using a zigzag stitch, and you are all done. Well, that's all there is to it. I hope you've enjoyed this so long. Please make sure and follow me on Instagram at Mimi G Style and use the following hashtags. Hashtag Mimi G Style Tutorials or Mimi G Style Patterns. Now, if you want some further instruction on sewing, you can also sign up for SewItAcademy.com. Until next time, peace.